Hey guys, this is Tom with If This Car Could Talk, and welcome to the latest edition. This episode, we're featuring a 2010 Ford Mustang GT. Sit back and enjoy this episode as the car's owner, Billy Joe, tells you all about it. Hi, my name is Billy Joe. We live here in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm originally from Stevensville, Montana. And I own a 2010 Mustang GT that I absolutely adore. The Mustang is going on in our possession seven, eight years of having it. And I feel like I've been a good caretaker to it. Uh, we've got a lot of modifications on it. And the starting and the beginning of the story of the Mustang started out on a Black Friday of 2013. My husband's watching a college football game and I'm bored and I'm on the internet and I'm tooling around and we're getting ready to possibly trade off our fusion we have. And I was on the Jones Ford website and up popped the most gorgeous car I had ever seen in my life. This beautiful 2010 Mustang GT, sleek, black. I mean, it's just the vision of a purebred racehorse. And I'm going, ah, ah, no words coming out. Just take it in. I'm, I just said, I want it. He's looking at me like, get lost. Go, go do what you're going to go do. Sure thing. Go down to Jones Ford, walk up, showroom floor. And I'm just mouths on the floor, sales guys walking in, getting ready to do his thing. And I'm like, nah, just stop. I said, I'll take it. I said, first we'll drive it. So he brings, he, they roll it out, of course. And this kid's been driving a automatic for years and years and years and years. Five on the floor. I'm dead. So back it up, put it in gear, killed it first off. Didn't even get a rev. Dead on, dead on first takeoff. Back it up again, take the guy for a ride. Butt in, let's loose, sashaying down the the highway, I'm screaming, he's screaming, great t first test drive in the Mustang. <laughs> Pull back in, I'm still in love, I'm, I'm just googly eyed like a little kid. Go home, do the paperwork, they deliver the car to us that night. So that's how we got the Mustang. No, I wasn't looking for the Mustang, it found me. And yes, we traded off our Fusion and all that good stuff. And so that started the love affair with the Mustang. On a side note, my brother years ago in Montana, against my father's wishes because he hated Mustangs, brought home a 1971 killer black one. So I thought, well, what goes around comes around. So here we have the beautiful black Mustang and the first thing I call it, the nickname I give it is the black. Kind of like off of Black Beauty. I'm going with the referencing of running with the horses and such. Well, the first modification, husband comes out and he's like, you got it? And I'm like, we got it. He's like, this is fine. And he, he was kind enough when we signed all the paperwork and that's how it came in our possession. But that also started another thing. It started a love affair of changing the car. The car started out as a plain little black car. Not that now. So first thing that happened was we took it into, of all places, Mako and we asked them, can you do stripes? We got a hold of a master painter and the car was gone for two weeks and it came back with the most beautiful hand painted stripes ever we can imagine. Greg, my husband said, let's make it a tribute to Carol Shelby and do the Le Mans racing stripes, which is significant for him. That started also the Shelby love affair at that point in time. We, every year we've had the car, we've done something to the car. So it has slowly changed over the years to from a soft little purring car into a nice little loud little dragon I have right now. I can't even begin to list all the mods, but there's major modifications to the engine. It has pretty much a custom exhaust system to it. Uh, it has a special tune all to itself. We've had it dyno twice. We went with another one on it. It has a very nice street tune, as he called it. So it flushes out all the bad stuff and just gives you a straight little mean car. I don't know how fast it'll go in a quarter mile. I'm not going to find out. But I do know I've seen 130 and beyond in it just out of stupidity on the i10 one time. 
I don't know what else to say about it. It's just been a very fabulous car. It is the 4.6 liter. It is the smaller engine. So basically, it's like the 289 that they had in the 60s. It's not the fire-breathing GT500 that someday I will have, but it's a really good car. I have 112,000 miles on it. It spent its life a long time as a daily driver from Casa Grande into Phoenix, day in and day out. We've had many adventures in this. About three years ago when we had the real bad downpours and that, I was on the side roads and it got into a flooded area. This car actually had water coming in through the doors, but we, it had enough engine in it to pull us on through and we pulled on out. No water damage, we got lucky, everything dried out in 100 degree heat. I've seen a lot of interesting things with it, I'll have to say that. It got gussied up over the years with different um, types of side panels and also we added the sticker and that was done up in Surprise. Um, it, I don't know, we've just done a lot of variations. Our final output that I do have it, it has the Giovanni wheels. It's lowered all the way around an inch and a half with Roush and also with a few other Ford parts into it. We've got a cold air intake. It's got many Ford racing parts. The biggest one though is the Ford racing intake where we replace that part and the manifold. That is pretty fun stuff. That increases the horsepower tremendously. Also the X-pipe, which is Ford racing. That's another big factor. So I don't know what it would sit at the dyno, but I know it's well above its normal range and where it had it before. We've made many trips with it everywhere. It's taken a lot of trophies. Um, it was featured in a Mustang magazine called, well, just that Mustang ma Stang magazine is what they called it. And we've had a Marty report pulled about it. It's got all its little goodies and things like that. For example, there's 5824 with that paint code job. There's 324 of only paint and trim. There's only 12,719 with the engine and transmission. There's 1,453 with the RC code and all. The original 19-inch wheels that came with it that I still have, there's only 65 of the six, I'm sorry, 6,571 of them. One weird part of this car that makes it come full round though is Jones Ford in 2009 actually ordered this car. This car was not produced until March 2nd, 2010. It's noted on the Marty report that it's a 75 day delay, which makes it very unusual for that type of a vehicle. They ended up back with that car when it was traded in, but it was owned by a collector in, in Maricopa. As for the modifications that were done to it at that point, I'm not too sure upon, but there were some done. This car is not supposed to have a track pack. It was ordered in, it has a track pack and that turns off every computer into that and it changes the car's configuration. Uh, the car does also have um, what's called My Color. You can go in and program what colors you want. You'll see in the, when you see the car, it has a red. So when it's completely dark out, that car illuminates solid red coming off. You can have blue, you can have green, you can have white. Sometimes you can intermix the two if you want. Also, when you open up the door on the bottom where it says Mustang, that illuminates red. So Ford threw in a few fun things for people to play with on that. It has a very simple onboard computer. None of the fancy touch screens were about two years, about five years off of all that good stuff hitting on the Mustang. This is a S197. It has some of the lower configuration numbers, the code the last four are its main numbers, it's 0025, so on the day it was bucked, it was 25th off the line on that day. The full serial number is 800125, but the last four of the big ones is 0025. So that's why it has such a low number. Because it was uh, the production was so far delayed, <laughs> it ended up being a low numbered Mustang. There's no accurate count on how many 2010s are out there. They're kind of hard to, every now and then, they're kind of hard to come by. 2010 is considered the odd year of the Mustang because in 2010, they were supposed to drop the 5.0 actually into it. They waited a whole year and put it in the 2011. So a lot of 2010 people have the heartache of still having the 4.63 valve naturally aspirated when everybody wants the 5.0. Oh well, I guess we'll have to go with what we got, but it's, it's fast enough for me. 
It goes past Camrys and Priuses quite well. But that's, that's the story of the Mustang. Well, thanks for that great feature, Billy Joe. It's an awesome car, and I'm glad to hear you're having a lot of fun with it. That's what having a cool car is all about. Taking it out, driving it, enjoying it, and letting other people enjoy it as well. Uh, don't forget, this coming Thursday, we'll have the second part of the continuation story of the 2010 Ford Mustang GTs. If you would like to subscribe to our channel, just hit that free subscription button and you will not miss one of our detailed and informative videos. Be careful out there.